Hello, my name is Don Farwell. I own and run Earwig Studio here in Seattle, Washington, and I've been invited to do a gear review for Gear Fanatics on the Chameleon Labs 7603 Mic Pre and EQ. So early on, we decided to just throw it in the rack. It's been here for about a month, and I've been using it almost daily on, on sessions here at the studio. So Earwig, I'm lucky enough to be very busy, and the the 7603 has been in heavy rotation for the entire month. And so we're gonna play back for you some of the sound samples that I've captured and talk about what it's been like using it during sessions. Let's get started. Cello was one of my favorite things to record through the mic pre. It was at the end, very end of the month that it had been here, and I had already had a lot of confidence in, in using the mic pre, and it was for a solo cello piece, uh, very stripped down. I used a Neumann U87 going through the Chameleon Lab 7603. I added just a touch of EQ. Uh, if memory serves, I gave just a bump at about 1.6k and just a little bit of sh high sh shelf at 16k which is one of the things I really like about the box is that it has a 16k uh, frequency select which is higher than I'm used to seeing in, in a Neve style uh, mic pre. And so uh, the piece is only a minute long so we'll, we'll play that for you and Oh, and I did use just minimal compression through a Retro 176, which is a lovely uh, tube compressor. And But that was it. U87, mic pre, a little bit of EQ, very minimal compression. And so the clip you're going to hear doesn't have any uh, added reverb to it. It's just the, the signal as recorded. Okay, this is the For Realsies Pro Tools clip for... The cello clip. Uh, and turn off my mic. I want to do a really quick shout out to Nathan Chan, the cellist for the for the piece composed by Christiana Wu, who not only composed the piece, she wrote and directed the short film that it's for. It's called Trill, and it's going to be coming out this fall. Please. So the next clip is electric guitar, one of my favorite things, as some of you may know. But um, let's see, uh, Chris. Livesey was in recording. We're doing some of his solo album work and we were running his his 335 Semi Hollow through a Dr. Z Z Lux through an Alnico Creamback mic'd with the SM57 that was going through the Chameleon Lab 7603 and uh, just a little bit of compression with an 1176 and uh, I think we got a great tone, you know, a lot of times if I'm in a hurry or, which we were, we were flying around doing lots of stuff for his demo, and we just jammed a 57 in the, in the speaker cab and it turned out great. I added just a little bit of EQ. When I'm recording electric guitar, I typically don't uh, track with a lot of EQ, but in this case I was 
kind of wanted to feel it out, see how it did. And so I ended up rolling off, uh, doing some high pass filter just to get a little bit of rumble out of there. And then I added, I think it was just a touch of upper mid range somewhere around, I think it's 3.5 on the box. But, um, you know, in, in general, I found that the Chameleon Labs had really flexible EQ points. The EQ in general is not, it's it's pretty gentle. Like I didn't feel like, like the high shelf and the low shelf and the mid bands, you can, you can crank it and it's not gonna feel like really over EQ. So I think it turned out great. Yay. Looks like we're recording. Okay, this is going to be for the electric guitar clip. So the very first thing I recorded through the 7603 was kick drum. I was doing a drum session with a local band called Intrinsic Factor, and uh, I just wanted to jump in and see how it did on drums. And I gotta say that the first time using it, I was a little concerned because um, even with the gain turned all the way down, I was getting some, or at least at the first click, I was getting some overload, um, some peak lights which I wasn't really used to in um, like a Neve style preamp uh, overloading that that quickly. But it made me think, um, you know, some of my other Neve style preamps don't have an overload light. And, and I, ha I had a thought that there is a very good chance that I actually am into some kind of peak territory on those mic pre's. I, I just don't know it. And so I stopped kind of paying attention to that and just kind of listened and it sounded fantastic. And so I just rolled with it. And if you look at the waveform, if you I didn't zoom in on the on the on the clip, but I did during the session and there's no like no, you know, distortion or or square wave action happening. So my guess is that peak light must come on pretty early and um I did find that uh, the, the EQ for, for drums, for, for bass drum specifically, the high shelf and some of the, I had to really crank the, the high shelf and uh, the upper mid band just boosted the heck out of them to get uh, some of the punch that I needed out of the bass drum. Um, and so I was, I was kind of surprised by that because some of my other EQs, you don't have to kind of crank them up as much to kind of feel like you're, you're getting what you need. So I think some of the EQ curves uh, for the, for the mid-band, uh, they, they feel like they're fairly wide. And I don't think that's necessarily a negative thing. It's just something I noticed as, you know, in real time. I probably wouldn't use this EQ for like surgical cuts at a certain frequency, um, but I felt like they were kind of, musical overall and um, you just don't be afraid to just crank crank them up if you need it and the second clip is going to be snare drum this is a from a completely different session i was working with a solo artist who uh, was kind of doing everything playing drums and guitar and singing and for that it was a uh, just a 57 on a ludwig black beauty uh, going through the 7603, and that one you can hear that I am definitely kind of uh, boosting some uh, some top end on that. You know, it's one of my favorite things to do on snare drum in general, is to crank up that that shelf at 12k or so, uh, just to give the snare drum some lift. I don't think I did any cut. If anything, I may have done a little bit of like in the low mids, just scooped out a little bit. But because it has kind of a wide cue. I took it really easy uh, on, on the cut. I didn't want to, 
you know, get rid of a bunch of mid-range. So just a little bit of cut in the low mids and some boost up top, and that's it. Um, in general, I think it works great on drums. Uh, once I kind of got over my initial feeling of, like, oh no, overload lights, you know, just use your ears. It sounds just fine. You just, you know, it, it has a lot of gain, and drums are loud, so you don't have to turn up very loud. So one other nice thing about it is that I actually often do like to drive the front end of a mic preamp. And so I haven't gotten into this, but I look forward to driving the front end uh, because one of the nice things, not all preamps have this, it does have an output uh, level control. So you can drive the input and turn down the output if you want kind of a, an overdriven uh, mic tone on drums. Okay, this is the uh, drum clip number one. This is a kick drum. And here we go. Okay, this is for the second drum clip uh, for snare drum. Turning off my mic. Okay, in conclusion. In conclusion, I love this box. To me, there are numerous companies out there making Neve clones and British style, you know, British style and a Neve sounding mic preamps, but I own a, a couple of them, but I don't really care about that stuff so much anymore. I mean, I don't really care if it's like a Neve clone, it sounds like this, sounds like that. Uh, this box is great quality. I never hesitated to reach for it. I really enjoyed the fact that it had EQ built into the mic pre. I don't have that on a lot of my mic pre's. I have to like patch into an EQ if I need it. So it has that kind of, you know, immediacy. I need to do something quick. I like that kind of tool. So in a studio where I stay busy all the time, I'm recording bands day in and day out. I need things that, that are, that sound great and are easy to use. And I think it, it's both of those things. It also is built really well. I think I expected something that at, at this price point to not have as, as good of switches and knobs. Everything felt really great on this box. I, I remember the 7602 not really liking the look or the feel of it as much, but this one looks, feels great, it even has a built-in VU. So I think the feature set for what you get and what you pay for is excellent. I definitely am, uh, gonna keep this box at the top of the rack and I'm gonna use it on lots of stuff. Yes. Big shout out to, to Gear Fanatics and Chameleon Labs. Uh, the 7603 is fantastic and my name is Don. I run Earwig Studio in Seattle and we'll see you next time. Hope I get to do this again.